In 2040, Rhea, a female android, wakes up beside a different person daily as part of a reality show. However, an incident causes the scripted robot to act way out of her character and does what must not be seen on live television. Inside a pink house in the desert, Rhea wakes up to a neon sign and enthusiastically greets the world aloud. She chooses to wear a light-colored dress and serves morning tea on the bedside table. Then, Rhea pleasantly wakes the man called Jack, who sleeps on the bed and greets her in return. At the dining table, Jack looks sullen and doesn't eat his breakfast, which makes Rhea worry. The man then tells her that all his worries fade away when she's with him. Afterward, Jack helps Rhea diligently do the house chores while he looks around at the cameras placed inside the house. In the room, their hands accidentally touch while arranging the bed, so Rhea withdraws and tells Jack that they can only be intimate at 9 in the evening. Jack clarifies that it wasn't his intention and continues making the bed. In the afternoon, Jack sees Rhea sitting on the makeshift lawn and tending the plants. She holds out the garden shears and muses over the low price and discount on the product allowed. Then, their song comes up on the radio, so Rhea asks Jack for a dance, and he obliges. Jack looks at his partner in awe but worries that their sweet afternoon might end soon. A few moments later, Jack remembers his car accident, where he was severely injured and abandoned by the suspected criminal. At 4 o'clock, Rhea wears her workout clothes and shows the man some exercises which he finds adorable. He invites her to laze around, but the tireless woman gets up to change. After taking a shower, Rhea wears a sultry dress beneath her clothes to prepare for their evening together. At 6 o'clock, the pair start preparing dinner in the kitchen. Rhea markets the sauce she uses aloud, then asks Jack if he likes mushrooms. The man says no, but the enthusiastic woman puts them in their meal anyway. At dinner, Jack compliments Rhea's cooking and proposes that they should do something different rather than watching soap operas on TV. However, she refuses as she prefers to watch her favorite melodrama. Jack is well aware of his partner's choices and gives up on changing Rhea's routine. While Rhea washes the dishes, she muses over the dishwashing liquid aloud. Jack gets tired of her frequent advertisement of their products and tells her that he'll wait for her in the other room. Later, the eloquent woman watches her soap opera while Jack opens a box that contains a gift for him to end the day. At precisely 9 o'clock, Rhea invites Jack into the bedroom and unclothes herself. The man follows suit and they share an intimate moment before the day ends. The following morning, Rhea wakes up and smilingly follows the exact routine she did the day before. She now chooses to wear a red dress and brings coffee to the bedside table. Then, she wakes Jack, a completely different man from yesterday. At breakfast, the new Jack insults Rhea's cooking, but the eloquent woman remains smiling and thanks him. While making the bed, Jack makes sexual advances towards Rhea, who informs him that he must wait until 9 o'clock. The new Jack ignores this, locks the door, and pushes the woman onto the bed while she tries to stop him. In the afternoon, Rhea appears fine and continues advertising her garden shears on the fake lawn. She then invites the new Jack to dance, but he refuses, so she dances alone. Ideally, Jack should interact with Rhea just like the man before. However, the new Jack likes to do things according to his wants and ignores the vigilant woman. While talking to herself, Rhea calls out Jack's laziness, who swears at her in return. Then, Rhea does her exercise while the new Jack laughs at her. He even peeks in the shower while the woman washes herself. At 6 o'clock, the woman prepares dinner alone and advertises the sauce. Jack comes in and angrily throws a pack of frozen fries on the table for Rhea to cook. He also orders her to dress up for dinner. At the dining table, Jack laughs and throws fries at Rhea, who is dressed in a banana costume. The oblivious woman doesn't mind her partner's mistreatment and continues smiling. While watching Rhea's favorite soap opera, Jack opens a gift box for him. On the other hand, the people watching them eagerly command Rhea to make advances toward him. As soon as 9 o'clock chimes in, Jack carries Rhea to the bed and advances to the unresponsive woman. The following morning, Rhea wakes up at the exact same time and now chooses to wear a blue dress. She serves hot chocolate on the bedside table and wakes Jack, who now appears to be a young woman. The new Jack calls the perfect woman her best friend and dresses up in one of Rhea's clothes. Jack engages her in a pillow fight, which Rhea enjoys. Meanwhile, the people who watch the two have fun and laugh with them as well. In the afternoon, the new Jack joyfully dances with Rhea and copies her habits, which Jack is well aware. The young woman also joins Rhea in her routine exercise at 4 o'clock. Then, Rhea proposes that they dress up for dinner, which she was requested the day before by the rude Jack. At dinner, the new Jack compliments Rhea's cooking and dress, which the young woman also has of her own. While Rhea advertises her dishwashing soap, the new Jack shares that she also wants to be an actress, who is a bartender in real life. Comfortably, the bartender wears a unicorn onesie and opens her gift box. In it are sweets, which she shares with Rhea, who watches her soap opera diligently. The next morning, Rhea wakes to another different person whom she calls Jack. The perfect woman does her routine exactly on time and prepares according to her partner's unique preferences. 
No matter Jack's reactions and treatment, Rhea remains smiling and oblivious to the cameras surrounding her home. When the day ends, the cleaning crew comes inside the house and puts everything back into place. They put a device around Rhea's head and reset her program while they silently wake Jack beside her. They inform the current Jack to head into a van outside, where she'll pass by the next Jack. On the other side of Rhea's world, Erica Turner, a show interviewer, introduces her guests on her talk show. Mitchell and Robert, respectively, are the producer and director of the television program A Day with Rhea, which the perfect housewife Rhea stars on. The two guests share their secret to the award-winning and long-running program. Amidst criticism regarding the creation and ethics of the show, Robert defends their program's unpredictable nature because of its different contestants, making the show entertaining. They reveal that they use updated technology and have 250 cameras all over the house with varying sizes with consistently high quality. Robert also reveals that the audience has control over Rhea's behavior and choices whenever Jack has a question or a request. The audience of A Day with Rhea reacts differently to every unique guest in the house. Meanwhile, Rhea remains the same and accommodating to every humiliation she faces. Then, Robert surprises their audience with a new theme of the upcoming season, where Rhea will spend Christmas Day with her partner. Despite this, Erica asks her guest about the controversy surrounding their show, or some viewers call it inhumane. Robert and Mitchell awkwardly laugh at the subject and refuse to answer. Erica picks up the change of mood and abruptly ends her show. In a TV commercial, a day with Rhea starts with an enthusiastic narrator who guides the viewers on how to participate in the show through an application called Reapp. The viewers have the choice of which lipstick she will use, which color of dress she will wear, and suggest activities she will do throughout the day. Afterward, Mitchell is mad at Erica for bringing up the controversy about the protest against their show. However, Robert remains untroubled by the incident as long as it doesn't affect the ratings. Mitchell changes his mind and takes advantage of the controversy to make their show relevant. He even thinks that the protesters watch their show non-stop and plan to bring more drama in order to attract more viewers. Meanwhile, Van brings the next Jack to the pink house. On the other hand, Jess, the secretary of the vice president, shows a locked email to Vice President Fleming, which flags as a personal message from his son. Back in the studio, the staff laughs at the current Jack who plays with Rhea's unresponsive body before the day ends. Angrily, Robert scolds his team for being inattentive and demands that they should induce more drama to boost their ratings. Then, Mitchell reveals that their next contestant is relatively interesting. The next Jack provided a false identity and appears to be the son of the vice president. Thrilled, the producer and the director personally call the vice president's son and address him as Jack. They remind him that no other technologies are allowed once he's inside the house. The two stir up the excitement and tell Jack to show them something new. They even promise to erase the previous Jack's memory so that he'll have a clean slate before he enters the house. As the call ends, Mitchell and Robert plan on what to show the press in order to cause controversy on their next show. Little did they know, Jack hides a device on his leg, which he takes with him in the house. Meanwhile, the vice president shows his secretary and John, his chief of staff, the farewell letter his son sent him. Jack will participate in a day with Rhea, so the two advise the vice president to observe how the show will turn out without acting on it. They think the production company doesn't know his son's real identity and plans to stay that way to avoid a national intervention. Concurrently, Jack undresses and bids Rhea goodnight. The next day, a day with Rhea begins, and the viewers start choosing what Rhea will wear. When Rhea wakes Jack up, he takes out his device and uploads a virus that interferes with the broadcasting system of the show. Suddenly, the production loses signal in the house, appearing off-air to their confused viewers at home. The incident throws the staff into chaos while they try to figure out how to go back on air. In the meantime, they release Rhea's old commercials on repeat, which reaches the office of the vice president. John thinks the production company intentionally cut their live broadcast after knowing about Jack's real identity. Meanwhile, inside the pink house, Jack tells Rhea that she doesn't have to continue playing her routine since no one watches them. However, Rhea remains indifferent to the man's concerns and stays on script. Jack reveals that he was paid to disrupt the show and shares his doubts about the success of his operation. So, Jack calls his recruiter and tells him about Rhea's behavior, but the man on the other line tells him to trust his plan. In the production room, Mitchell rewinds the footage they have before they lose connection. They discover the device Jack holds, which causes the trouble. On the other hand, Jack faces the cameras against the wall and checks on some others, which his boss gains control over. Then, Jack's recruiter meddles in the show's programming, making Rhea shake her head violently. Suddenly, she regains consciousness, hits Jack with a pan, and ties him to a chair. Moments later, Rhea feeds Jack while he slowly wakes up. He then hits Rhea's plate on her hand with his knee, which causes the knife to stab the woman's arm. Jack watches in shock as Rhea removes the knife from her arm and removes a patch of her skin, revealing a robotic arm. Meanwhile, the production staff retrieves control over a few cameras and turns the hostage situation on air. 
Alarmed, Robert tries to stop the broadcast, but Mitchell insists they continue. He tells them to call the police and bring them over to the house while they try to take advantage of the controversy. At the same time, they inform their viewers that the hostage situation is live and real. Back in the house, Rhea covers her arm while Jack explains that his recruiter wants to free her out of love. Little did he know, his recruiter already controls the android and is now turning against Jack. Then, producer Mitchell finally receives a call from the White House. The producer assures the official that Rhea is incapable of killing, to which Vice President Fleming says that he should take control of what extent they must show the public, if ever the events turn to the worst. The Vice President reminds Mitchell about the restrictions that should control super-intelligent androids like Rhea. Fleming urges the producer to conceal the truth about his son's identity from the media. Meanwhile, Jack's boss has complete control over Rhea's actions and threatens the public that no one should come near the house if they don't want to witness Jack's murder. However, the viewers think that the violent warning is only part of the show. They do not think much of the incident from the confines of their homes while it urges them to vote for Jack's fate. Still in a call with Fleming, Mitchell wonders why the vice president's son is being held hostage in the show. Fleming insists that the mastermind's only motive is money. In the control room, Tanya, the head of the technical team, lies to the producer and director that Rhea is incapable of committing murder. The android remains inaccessible to them and they ponder over the death threat seriously. Meanwhile, Rhea shows Jack a newspaper clipping about the death of an 8-year-old boy in a car crash. The suspected criminal who ran away from his crime is the vice president's son, while his father pays millions to hide the incident and protect his name. The revelation on live television throws the vice president into panic and orders the producer to shut it down. Concurrently, the viewers decide on Jack's fate, after knowing that he killed the child and was able to escape his sentence. A few moments later, John arrives at the company to handle the situation. He reminds Robert and Mitchell of the consequences they will face if the robot decides to kill Jack. He continues to investigate and they lead him to the control room. Mitchell secretly tells Robert that they will end the broadcast on television but will pay a hacker to continue airing their show all over the internet. Afterward, the hacker they have connections with quickly recovers his footage as soon as the show is off air. At the same time, the viewers continue to monitor the show online. In the house, Jack apologizes to Rhea and confesses to the crime he committed seven years ago. He then reveals that he wanted to surrender to the police, but his father covered the incident. Jack took on the job to escape his powerful father but will forever be guilty of his sins. On the other hand, the mastermind is troubled by Jack's confession and leaves the room. In the control room, Tanya assures John that the android is not wired to kill. Then, they learn that the show is broadcasting online while Mitchell feigns ignorance. Suddenly, Rhea returns with a knife and stabs Jack repeatedly before running away. The whole world is in shock over the live and brutal murder. Then, the FBI arrives and takes Robert and Mitchell away. Meanwhile, Rhea runs through the desert far away from the house, where the production team loses track. She meets with the mastermind, David, and they drive into hiding. Months later, Vice President Fleming accuses Jess of teaming up with the mastermind. He reveals that he's aware that she contacted David while the Vice President's son was held hostage. Filled with remorse, Jess confesses to assisting the murderer as she, too, feels guilty for helping her boss cover the incident seven years ago. Meanwhile, Robert talks to Mitchell over the phone, who is in jail and muses over the trending rerun of their popular episode. Then, Mitchell tells him to prepare for the next season, and Robert discovers the other robots in a container that looks precisely like Rhea, waiting to air another show. Inside an inn, the broken Rhea watches the Christmas season of the show on television. She tells Jack that she's scared of going back in the program, revealing that the robot has emotions after all. She then confesses her love for him and apologizes for being imperfect. Attached, David reminds her that she's irreplaceable and her imperfections make her more human. He shares his sincerity and regrets all his actions which made him a murderer. At the same time, Vice President Fleming watches David vulnerable in front of Rhea through the android's camera. Somehow, he is able to regain control over Rhea with Jess's help and orders her to activate the android's kill mode. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.